Okay, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to another episode of College and Career Pathways, where every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 2 p.m., we provide you with information on various colleges and universities, financial aid resources, skilled trade professions, technical programs, and career readiness skills, all designed to help you make the best career decisions possible. I'm Tony Kirton, your host, and today we are back with uh, Michigan Schools and Government Credit Union, and they are continuing in our financial literacy series. And today we are going to be talking about how to figure out and understand what your credit score is and what it means and all of that good information. Colleen, welcome back. We're so glad to have you. Thank you so much. Glad to be here. Good to see you again. Uh, instead of one video, let me make sure I check the boxes. I have uh, a series of three much shorter videos kind of go over credit report. So I'll, or I'll just show them right in a row for you. What's the score? What's the credit score? Let me tell you. No, I mean the- All right, a credit score is a three digit number between 300 and 850 that's calculated by credit bureaus. The higher your score, the better you look to potential lenders. Basically, a credit score rates your credit worthiness. It's all based on the info in your credit report. Woo! W wait, what happened? I missed it. I got approved for a loan because of my great credit score. Yeah! Wee! Yeah! <laughs> yes! <laughs> What's that? Game stats? Fantasy league picks? Inspirational player backstories? Nope. It's my credit score. Honestly, I'm not quite sure why I have one. Your credit score helps predict the likelihood of you making on-time payments. Your credit report contains info on your use of credit over time, and that info gets fed through a scoring model that calculates your credit score. This standardized system helps lenders and landlords assess risk more easily. If you keep your score up, it can give you more options and save you a ton of money. Cool. Time to run up the score and reach the top of my game. Yes. Go, go, go. Come <laughs> Score! Hey, who's winning? I mean, my credit score. It's awesome. How's yours? Ah, uh, it's complicated. Sure is. Let's break it down. Your credit score is calculated based on your history of on-time payments, how much of your credit capacity you use, how long you've had a credit history, how many new credit accounts you open, and the variety of different types of credit that you use. Yeah. Nice rundown. So do you play on the team, or? Woo! All right, so those are those are cute, and they're they're pretty uh, rapid fire. So I I know it uh, comes at you pretty quick. So we're gonna go over in more detail. Okay, so now we can see breakdown of a credit score. Excellent. Before credit scores. Basically, before you you turn 18, you don't have a credit score. Other people under 18 don't have a credit score. So when you lend money to someone or when someone lends money to you, it's just based off of their opinion. It's based off of, you know, how they personally judge. Once you turn 18, things start being tracked as a record and that becomes the standard for measuring risk. What is a credit score? Now, working backwards a little bit, I always consider a credit report like an adult report card and a credit score like an adult GPA. So a credit score is a number used by financial institutions and credit card companies to determine your risk level, determine your credit worthiness when issuing you a loan or a credit card. Now, breaking that down, that means like your GPA, it's one number that represents a lot of information and that number is used to make a decision about you, whether you should be approved for a loan, whether you should be approved for a credit card, uh, how much should I loan you? those type of things. 
the FICO score is the most commonly used um, method of scoring. Uh, really, you just need to know FICO score means credit score. If someone says, oh, what's your FICO score? And you're thinking, well, I have a credit score. What's my FICO score? It's the same thing. They're talking about the same thing. It's, uh, it's kind of like saying how what they use to calculate your GPA. Now, there are three credit bureaus, uh, like the credit report is your report card, the credit score is your GPA, the credit bureaus are like the main office, like the administration office. It collects all the information from the different teachers, from the different companies, organizes it into a report, and then releases it out, right? So it's like uh, having three different, maybe like a district and a school and a, a, a countywide uh, report, you know, or maybe... It, it, they're very similar. They're just three different collectors of information and they each produce a report. Your number can vary between them. This is, this is a lot between 700 and 765. That's a pretty big difference. I, I would say for the most part, you're not going to see that much of a difference. It'll be, you know, maybe 25 points it's not going to necessarily be exactly the same, but it shouldn't, they should be similar. I mean, they shouldn't be, there shouldn't be a 600 anything in here, you know, over 600. A 765, according to someone, it's not very likely they'd go as low as a, you know, 600 something with someone else. So some credit unions will pull up an Equifax. Some banks might pull up the TransUnion report. Some might pull up more than one. You can ask ahead of time. It might matter. It might not matter, depending on what your score is. So what does your score mean? Again, thinking like a GPA, you know, what's the point of your GPA? Well, it's to maybe apply for scholarships. You know, hopefully this GPA is uh, good enough to reward me with some scholarship money. Uh, I'm going to use it to try to get into colleges, to get into more prestigious colleges, into uh, certain specific programs and certifications. Along those lines, your credit score is a way someone's judging you, hoping I can get that loan, hoping I can borrow that, hoping you know, you can use this to judge whether I'll get something more expensive or I'll have to pay and have it more expensive or I'll pay less and it'll be less expensive. This is, this is a very informative chart here. Now, from 300 to 850 is the whole spectrum, right? The whole credit scores. Like your school grades, you know, think about if you get a grade on something, it's between zero and 100. But anything under 60% is failing, right? If you get a 30% and the person next to you gets a 50%, I mean, technically they did better than you, but you both failed, right? You, you Both of your grades are considered failing grades. Along those lines, really everything in the orange, really everything, let's say up to 600, you know, 55, 60, 550, 60, 600, that's, that's the cutoff. Anything under that is where we want to stay away from, right? That's the so-called, you know, failing where it, it's going to make things a lot more difficult. Uh, you might have to repeat the class. You might not be able to move on. You might not be able to get into, you know, those programs. Uh, so low score, again, denied for a credit card. Um, and like your grades, just because it's a low score now doesn't mean it's always going to be a low score. But really under 600, under 580 here, that's not looking good. This middle range bet between, well, this is a large middle range here. I'd say the middle range is the yellow. Between 580 and 670 is like a C, B minus. Pretty good. 
pretty good. It's not great. It's not bad either. You know, it's not a bad grade. A B and a C is pretty good. That score will probably get you approved for what you need, but the interest rate may be higher than you want to pay. Uh, this good here, I'd say that's that's better than fair, better, you know, good. Over 700. Over 700 is kind of like getting like a 95. If you get a 95, that's amazing, right? That's great. You're super excited. Uh, a 740, it's like a 99%, 100%. Be happy with that 740. Now, see this dark green here, very good. Between 740 and 800, that's tough to get. I get that question a lot. Well, how do I get my score to 800? I have a 765, I have a 750. How do I get it to 800? If you have a 745, 765, you have a hundred percent, you know, you are getting the best deal. You are getting the best interest rate. You are at the top of the tier. It is difficult. It's very difficult to get a credit score up in the 800s. You'll need decades of, you know, history and really positive examples. So don't think unless I have an 800, I don't have a good credit score. Anything over 700, you, you, can, you can go like that. Now, why does it matter? Why, why does this credit score matter? What if I'm not trying to get a credit card and I'm not trying to get a loan? I'm just 18 in college. What does it matter? Well, it can influence things like renting an apartment. When you apply at any sort of leasing office, whether it's on campus or off campus, going to run a credit report and they're not setting the rent according to your to the credit report, but they're deciding whether to rent to you at all because of your credit report. Right. So if you have a history of missed payments or late payments, they may just say, we we're not going to rent to you. And that that can make it tough. That can make it where the only places you can get into are the really expensive places. Student loans in order to not only get approved for student loans, but also to get your student loans dispersed. I know someone who had um, their financial aid was on hold, was, was not being um, dispensed to the school because there was a, a collection on, on the credit report. And it took a while to figure out what was going on. And because it's a government loan, um, you know, they want you to have good credit report. Car payments. Car payments is probably the first loan you're going to deal with. A credit card is technically a loan, but it doesn't feel like a loan where you, you know, you pay a fixed rate every month. Uh, you're probably not going to buy a house for a while, probably not going to take out a personal loan for a while, but you probably are going to get a car loan, whether it's a $10,000, 20000 30000 however much. But that interest rate, is it 1%, 3%, 5%, 14%? You know, if you get a $30,000 car, 14% versus 2% is a huge difference when it comes to paying tax, when it comes to paying interest, right? And job applications. This one I really stress when I'm in classrooms, especially. Please remember job applications thinking about jobs for a moment. There are a lot of different ways to represent yourself, right? You have your physical self, you have your personality, you know, your charmingness, the, the way you speak. You have your credit report, your credit score. You know, you have this report that shows your financial history, your financial behavior. You could bring up your academic history, your, your transcripts. Here's my past uh, you know, academic behavior. 
you have a background report, you know, police report. Let me show you I have this uh, clean uh, background report or maybe not so clean background report. My uh, resume, you know, the list of previous jobs I've had, a list of references, people who will say good things about me. There's lots of different ways to represent yourself. So if one of those ways, maybe the background, maybe uh, the previous jobs, maybe those aren't at the level that you'd like them to be at the moment, you can turn to the credit score, use the credit score. Having a high credit score, maintaining a good credit score will allow you another way to represent yourself in a very positive, it will help you. So job applications, it's not a direct connection where the employer says, you need to have a 700 in order to work here. It's not, it's not going to work like that. It's going to be more, uh, I put a job out, or a job uh, opening, and I received 100 responses. Who 100 responses. Wow, all these people have you know, the years of experience and the years of education that I asked for, well, I, I can't interview a hundred people. That's just, I don't have that much time. That's craziness. Um, well, a lot of companies will have um, like an online uh, personality test, I guess I'll call it, but it asks questions about teamwork and leadership skills and, you know, situation management. Uh, so they can kind of get a better sense of how you think. They may ask you to fill that out. A lot of times they'll ask to run your credit report. Now they're just checking it. They're just looking at it so it can be compared to the others. Now that I have these hundred, maybe I notice, well, 25 of them are under, you know, a 600. Well, I can knock these 25 out and look at these 75. Maybe I notice 50% of them are under 700 or excuse me, under 600. Uh, I, I don't know what's the pattern. Maybe they all have really great credit and then I'm going to have to use a different method. But if you get weeded out of the pile because of your credit score, it, it's heartbreaking. You have the experience, you have the education, you have the personality and, and the eloquence. Uh, but if you can't get to that interview, if you can't, get to that next step where they say, please come in for an interview, it's a huge detriment. You know, you can lose out on a lot of really great opportunities. So your credit score does matter for things beyond finance, you know, direct financial, you know, loans. It's your reputation, your uh, car insurance, it's not listed on here. Car insurance companies, run your credit report and how much they charge you for insurance, how likely they think you are to get into an accident, how likely they think you are, uh, you know, to get tickets and get points on your record. Um, they're going to charge you more if you look riskier, right? So another example. Well, we mentioned, you know, what, where we want the score to be. We want it to be over 700. And we know that it's important, okay? Well, now we're asking, how do you come up with that number? Where did you get that number 700? Why, why did this credit bureau come up with 750 and this one come up with 725? Well, the reason the three credit bureaus may have different scores is because not every single institution reports to all three. Um, Let's say you are paying your phone payment and the phone company only reports to two of the three credit bureaus. So it's just not included on your credit report with the other one. You're not hurt by it. You're not helped by it. It's just not included. But each of them use the same breakdown. Each credit bureau uses the same breakdown. 35% payment history. 30% capacity, those are the two big ones we're going to spend some time on. And then the smaller ones that you'll work on as you get older, length of credit, new credit, and mix of credit. 
payment history, 35%, the biggest chunk, the largest percentage of making up your score is paying on time. Paying on time, paying in full. Paying on time and in full is, is the tip top best. But the bare minimum is always pay on time, right? Again, thinking back to school, if you always turn every assignment in on time, even if you don't get 100 on it, you'll probably do okay in the class. But if you turned in half of your assignments late, even if you did really well on them, your grade's never going to be that, that 100, you know, 95% because of the late assignments. So late assignments, late payments, missing payments, really stand out and they, they make a big deal. So especially when you're young, when you're 18, 19, and instead of having seven years worth of credit to show, you only have one or two or three years worth of credit to show, having any late payments really sticks out. So making sure you pay on time is the most important thing you can do to maintain or improve your credit score. Capacity. Capacity uh, is another way of saying, how much do you owe? You know, do you owe $5,000? Do you owe $50,000? Uh, and who do you owe it to, right? You know, we understand you're making payments, but, you know, how much of your credit are you actually using? When they say, how much of your credit are you using? Thinking back to when we talked about credit cards, uh, if I have a credit card for Old Navy and it lets me spend up to $1,000 and I have a credit card with um, Kohl's and Kohl's lets me spend up to $1,000 and I have a personal MSGCU credit card that lets me spend up to $5,000. So my credit report is gonna list all three, 5,000, 1,000, 1,000. So my credit, I have the ability to spend $7,000. The most I could possibly spend is 7,000, right? So right now, how much out of that total 7,000 do I owe? Right now, it could be um, two thousand. Let's say I owe two thousand. Okay, okay. Maybe it's five hundred on one card, five hundred on another card, a thousand on another. It will show how it's broken up, but the capacity is taking all of your debts, your car debt, your home, your student loan, your credit cards, and saying if you maxed all of these out. What's the, how, what's the most you could spend and how much of that total amount do you owe right now, right? Because think about it. If you have the ability to spend $7,000 and month after month after month, you're owing like $6,500, $6,800. Well, that's really showing you're, you're not really you're not really paying down your debt. You know, you might be paying and spending and paying and spending, but the amount of debt you hold is remaining the same. Uh, if you only owe maybe $1,000, $1,500 out of 7,000, that shows that, you know, you, you left yourself some room. You have a room in case of emergency. You have um, room uh, just to show that you have self-control, that you're not using. You know, I know I can spend 5,000, but I, I don't need to. There's no reason to right now. So it looks better the less credit you use, okay? Those are the two I really want you to remember. The less credit you use, and making sure you pay on time. As you get older, it will matter length of history. Length of history is important to you right now because if you comparison shop and really pick out your first credit card purposefully, 
that credit card can stay with you for the next 40 years, 50 years, right? And that is literally the best, the longest potential length of credit you can have is starting at 18, right? But a lot of people just sign up for the first credit card they see or the first credit card that has, you know, a puppy on it or a guitar on it or, you know, says they'll get rewards. And that person realizes years later, well, maybe this this credit card wasn't the best one. Or they sign up for a bunch of credit cards. And then as they get older, they realize, well, I, I need to close. <laughs> I need to close some of these. Length of credit. Again, think of looking for a job. Uh, if you're applying somewhere and you have eight years of experience and the person next to me has eight years of experience, okay? Now, I have eight years of experience teaching uh, at one high school, at the same high school. And this teacher has experience working, you know, two years at a high school, uh, two years at a different high school, one year at the middle school, you know, two years somewhere else, and then however many years are left, that like four, four or five different schools. Now we both have the same amount of experience and years, but if someone's looking to hire us, they're probably looking for stability, right? Why did this person change jobs so often? Are, are, do they not get along with their boss? Um, are they kind of being asked to leave? Uh, if I hire them, are they just going to leave after a year? You know, that's what this background kind of tells me. So if you have different bills, you open a credit card, you close a credit card, you open a credit card, you close a credit card. Along those lines, if you don't establish a nice, long standing, stable relationship with a credit card, you know, company, you look less stable, right? So again, find that good fixed low interest rate first credit card and you can keep it for, for decades to come. New credit, don't worry about new credit. This is really saying if you're asking for money today, I want to know who you've been asking for money the last couple months, right? Maybe no one. But if you've gone to a bunch of people before me, well, wow, what you need an awful lot of money. This seems awfully desperate. This seems awfully suspicious. I, I don't know if I want to lend to you anymore, right? So this is kind of just recent uh, credit. And mix of credit, again, like your uh, job history, I mean, having eight years at one school, uh, maybe this person with multiple years has experience in, you know, a high school, a middle school, an elementary school, um, an alternative school, a special education school. And maybe by having those different experiences, that may actually be beneficial for a specific job. Uh, but mix of credit is showing that you can handle different types of debt. I can pay back a car loan, which is an installment loan. There's a fixed number of payments. I'm going to make all those payments. I'm going to pay the last one and I'm done. You can pay a credit card, which is a revolving loan, because even when you pay the credit card off, you can still turn around and use it again. So unlike a car loan that just, when it's done, it's done, you know, your credit card, the loan kind of keeps going. What about your student loan? Can you pay a student loan? What about multiple credit cards? So over time, you want to show that you have the ability, you know, to be more well-rounded. I, 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 I can borrow more and I can be just as responsible. How do you keep track of this score? This is a great question because just like in school, you might be thinking, oh, I'm sure I'm doing great. I probably got an A in the class, right? And then you come to find out, oh, really? I only have a C? How, how did that happen? I, I thought I had an A. 
you have to do a little research. You got to keep asking. You got to, you know, check the grades, check power school, make sure that you and your GPA are the, thinking the same thing. So anyone who has a credit report, anyone over 18 can legally and for free check their report once a year. So each of the three major bureaus, so you can get one free one from TransUnion, one free one from Equifax, and one free one from Experian. Now, you could get them all at the same time and compare to see you know, how, how different the numbers are, but then you're done for the year. So it's suggested that you maybe check Experian in January and then um, maybe Equifax in June and the other one in you know, October. So you space it out so that you can kind of keep a consistent eye on your credit, you know, instead of having to wait, you know, a whole nother year. Things to look out for. If you're looking at your credit report, right? You pull it. What am I looking at? You should recognize accounts that you have. Oh, yep. This is the name of my student loan company. This is the name of my bank that I pay my um, you know, credit card to or pay my auto loan to. Um, since it covers seven years of time, even if you've closed a credit card, even if you've paid off a loan, and it's in that seven year, the past seven years, it'll still show up as just existing. You know, you had this loan and you paid it off. You know, you still get credit for it. Um, you'll see your repayment history. So if you know that you, you paid on time, you, that you never made a single late payment, then you shouldn't see anything. You shouldn't, you should see a bunch of C's for current. Um, does everything look right? Does everything look familiar? Does anything stand out? Um, if you don't know what you're looking at, you think you know what you're looking at, but you're not sure, take it to the credit union. Take it to the credit union. You don't even have to be a member. Uh, you can go to a different credit union. Just go to any credit union. I have this credit report. Can, can you help? Explain um, what, what all this means. Absolutely, we'd love to help. It doesn't cost you anything, don't have to be a member. Um, but when you're young, there shouldn't be too much information on there. Now, this is reminding you that when you check your report, that free report, it does not include your score. You can pay for your score. I wouldn't recommend that. Um, you can usually tell by the report how, how good you're doing or how well you're doing. And whenever you do apply for credit, so when you do apply for that car loan, when you do apply for that credit card and your credit report gets run, you will find out the score then. So when you apply for a car and they type their number, oh, look at that, you got a 720, that's great. And they can kind of tell you, you know, why your score is a 720. If your score is only a 680 and you're shocked, well, well why? You know, they, they can show you. Well, it shows here that you have this and that you owe this much or that you just opened this. So obtaining credit reports yourself isn't the only way to, to access them. Credit Karma is another way to kind of like a preview. It's like going to power school and figuring out your grade before you get the report card. You know, something might have been changed. It might not be exactly the same as what shows up on your report card, but it should be pretty close. And I really like Credit Karma. I mean, they they send announce or not announcement notifications, you know, hey, we noticed you paid this off. Great job. Uh, hey, we noticed that this account was just open. Did you open it? Um, which is a good point. You say, well, Colleen, I don't have a credit card. I have, or maybe I have a credit card and I'm paying it off. Why do I need to check my report? I, I, I know I'm paying it off. I know I'm doing just fine. Well, that whole job application thing, rent approval, you want to make sure that it says the right things. 
right? You you would hate to get denied for an apartment and they say, well, it's because you you didn't pay this medical bill. And you're like, medical bill? What are you talking about? I, I don't have any medical. Well, it shows here you have this medical bill. And now you've got to write, you know, a dispute. You know, this is a mis mistake. This isn't supposed to be on here. Perhaps it was identity theft. Perhaps it was a clerical error. Perhaps, you know, you have the same name as someone else and it got entered, you know, or your account number is one number off. Things happen. It's not common, but you don't, you don't want to be surprised by it, right? You don't want to lose out on that job. You don't want to lose out on any opportunity. So you want to check your report every so often just to make sure it says what you think it does, right? That, um, and it doesn't even have to be uh, an identity theft. It could be just literally a mistake. Uh, years ago, I was applying for a store credit card and I got declined. And I was just so surprised why really what so you know i went uh and pulled my credit report and it showed that i had not paid my car payment in three months which made me 120 days late which is a big big deal and no wonder i wasn't approved the problem was three months ago i had made my last payment i paid the car off three months ago I owed zero dollars. So I, there was no reason I didn't, there were no more payments. So it had still been reporting, you know, the fact that I wasn't making payments, but when in reality, I, I didn't owe any more payments. So I had to put in a dispute. It got fixed. It got taken off. You are able to check your report again to make sure, you know, that it's gone. So you know, luckily that was just a store credit card, but you want to make sure things, you know, are, are what you think they are. Do utility bills appear on your credit report? The short answer is no. The longer answer is sometimes. <laughs> um, any service. So you're paying for um, your landscaper, you're paying your hairstylist, you're paying the doctor, you're paying the daycare, you're paying something for a service. None of that is ever going to show up on your credit report because you're not borrowing, you're just paying for a service. Now, things like paying for your water, paying for your heat, paying for, uh, you know, electricity, that's also not borrowing uh, but sometimes the cities will report it. Some cities, uh, other cities may not. I usually have not seen uh, utility bills. I know Lansing, I believe, reported. Any of those bills, however, if they go past that 120-day mark, or sometimes even before that, once they become late, once they become turned over to collections where you've officially become so late that 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 creditor has turned it over to someone else it's going to show up so if you have um you know your landscaper is suing you or you haven't paid your utility bills in six months um oh i see okay um you haven't paid your utility bills in six months it's going to show up. If you uh, haven't paid a medical bill, uh, you know, if you've legitimately not paid a medical bill for months, then it will show up. Now, the other side of that is there are these new kind of newfangled ways to try to raise your score. And you might have heard of like Experian Boost. Um, and there's Experian Boost, there's Ultra FICO. And what these are, are free ways to kind of request uh, more of your bills to be reported. Things like Netflix or Hulu, uh, bills that are reoccurring uh, annual or monthly bills. It wouldn't normally show up on your credit report, but if you think it would help you, there are... Um, 
these ways, Experian Boost, Ultra FICO, where you can try to throw in some extra bills to maybe raise your score 15, 20 points. So you can try to get your utilities added. Um, you can look into that, at least for Experian, I know that, uh, if you think that'll help you. If it might and might not, if it hurt you at all, then, then leave it alone. And yeah, I was gonna say, I think that's actually it. Are there any other questions? I mean, credit report, I could go on all afternoon, but uh, <laughs> some basic stuff. What you need to know is that it exists, that it matters, that you, you need to look out for it. You know, I'm going to need to pay things on time because it's going to be important to me in the future. And it's gonna affect me financially, mentally, um, a lot of ways. So are there any questions? You guys, if you um, want to unmute, um, you can ask your questions or you can put it in the chat box and ask your questions. I'll be more than happy to read it for you. Great presentation, Colleen. Thank you. I would have loved to have had seen something along these lines when I was turning 18. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I know. Me too. Me too. You know, <laughs> and, and, and you're so much better off. You're so far ahead. Just even attending this one workshop, really uh, just remember pieces. If you can remember pieces and bits, you're literally going to save yourself thousands of dollars. And one more thing about your credit score like your grades, your grades right now might not be so good. You might be failing a class. You, you might be getting a multiple Ds. You maybe have an incomplete for some reason. Maybe you've been sick a lot this year. You've moved. You've had the death of a family member. Your parents are divorcing. All kinds of reasons why your grades are suffering right now, right? Well, it's a rough time for you. You can work at it, work at it, turn some extra work in, do some extra credit, pull your report card six months later, a year later, and have much higher grades along the same lines. You may have a rough time, a breakup with a boyfriend, a girlfriend. Um, you know, you, you made some bad decisions. You co-signed on someone else's loan where right now your credit is not so good. Don't think, oh, I'm going into bankruptcy. This is terrible. I'm. You can come out. You can climb out. It is a snapshot of where you are right now. So ask for help. Find out what it is that's making your score low, and you absolutely can bring it up. Good deal. Good information. And, and another thing that absolutely will not fail you is to make sure that you pay all of your bills on time. You can never go wrong by making sure that all bills are paid by the date that they are due, if not earlier. <laughs> if not earlier, yep. I mean, and, and as a rule, I don't know about you, I try to uh, pretty much pay, pay bills on payday that, you know, anything that's due within the next two weeks, I'm going to pay it today. Because Absolutely. I mean, I don't have to pay it yet, but what I don't want to, you know, I don't want to spend that hundred bucks or 200, 300. So yeah, sometimes you got to pay it as soon as possible, just so you won't use the money for anything else. <laughs> and they have most companies, not even most, all companies have the ability to set up automatic payments. If, if your utility bill comes due on the 17th of every month, you have the ability to set up an automatic payment from your bank account. That way you don't forget. That way you're, you're not late. They take it automatically. And then that way, with regards to how it's recorded on your credit report, it can never ever be wrong because they take the money themselves. And the, the, if there is a missed calculation or a missed payment, that's on them. It's not on you. And that's easily disputable if it is reported inaccurately. So 
Um, again, excellent presentation. If there aren't any more questions or comments, then we will bring this session to a close. And we will see everybody on Wednesday. And everybody have a great day. Hey, everyone. Bye, everybody. Thank you.